Hi, this lesson is about how to read a graph um, and maximum and minimum values on a graph. So a graph is read from left to right, just like text. Um, so we have an example below that we're going to call h of x. So this is our graph of h of x. Um, and we're going to understand how to read certain attributes about h of x. So let's start with part a. Um, part A says to evaluate h of negative 3, h of 0, and h of 3 off of this graph. So remember, the negative 3, the 0, and the 3, those are the x values, and h of negative 3, h of 0, and h of 3, well, those would be the y values. So we really are just identifying what the y values are. So h of negative 3, when x is negative 3, my y value is um, this point here, the first point on the graph. Um, h of 0 is here when x is 0, and when x is 3, you are here. So your y values, h of negative 3 has a value of 4, that's this one. Um, h of 0 is at 0, and h of 3 has a value of 5. All right, so let's go on to part b. Um, so it says to state the domain and range of h of x, and we're going to use interval notation. Well, your domain, you can see that the graph starts at negative 3, and it ends at positive 4, and there are closed points at the beginning and at the end of this graph. So your domain is the interval from negative 3 to 4, uh, which is what you see here. And your range, well, with the range, you have to read the y values. So the smallest y value on this um, range is here. And the largest y value, where I'm just going to approximate it. It looks like it might be a little over 5, but um, let's say it's, it's 5. Um, so your range is from 0 to 5, which is what you see here on the right. Um, there are no holes in the graph or... Um, uh, anything missing, no discontinuities, so your intervals here should both be closed. Part C says to find the values of x for which h of x is equal to 2. And again, this is the y value. When is the y value, for what values of x are the y values equal to 2? Well, here's 2, and so let's see where your graph is 2. Well, it's here, and it's here, so it looks like I have an x value of negative 2, and this one looks like it's between 1 and 2, so um, so 1.5 or 1 and a half is the other x value. Um, all right, so let's go on to part D. Part D says find the values of x for which h of x is less than or equal to 4. All right, so here's my 4, um, and here's where the function is equal to 4. And h of x is less than or equal to 4 uh, all throughout this space here, um, and then again here. Uh, and then the rest of this, this part here, it's when h of x would be greater than 4, so we don't want to include that. So it is less than or equal to 4 for values of x from negative 3 to 2, as well as at 4 itself. So. Um, when you're expressing this with intervals, uh, I have a closed interval here because it's greater than or equal to, and we know that it's equal to 4 at negative 3 and 2. Um, but then this is just a single point, so the correct notation would be to say and um, at the, the point 4, and you put that within um, uh, bracket, uh, the curly bracket. So like set builder notation is used along with the interval notation. All right, so part E is asking you to find the net change in x between x equal to negative 3 and x equal to 3. So this is something um, that, um, th that you may remember from another section, but a net change would be the difference in the two y values uh, with the larger x value first and the smaller next x value second. Sorry, I used f and it should be h. So it'd be h of 3 and h of negative 3. 
So when x is 3, h of 3 appears to be 5. And when x is negative 3, h of 3 is 4. So that's exactly what you see here. h of 3 minus h of negative 3 is 5 minus 4. So there's a net change of 1 um, for h of x. All right. So uh, a graph is increasing if the graph is going upward from left to right. So like I said, when you're, when you're reading a graph, you read it from left to right. Um, and so what that means is that if you have two values, x sub 1 and x sub 2, that if x sub 2 is greater than x sub 1 and f of x sub 2 is greater than f of x sub 1, then f of x is considered to be increasing. So let's uh, just draw like a picture of what that would look like. So if I have x sub 1 here and x sub 2 here, so x sub 2 is greater than x sub 1 as this states. Um, and if you have one value here and another value there, uh, where f of x sub 2 uh, is greater than f of x sub 1, then you can see that from left to right, this graph is going upward. Um, so that would mean it's increasing. All right, so the opposite is true. A graph is decreasing if the graph is going downward from left to right. Um, and that occurs if you have two values of x where one is larger than the other, x sub uh, 2 is greater than x sub 1. So if I have x sub 1 here and x sub 2 somewhere to the right of it. Uh, but this time, f of x sub 2 is less than f of x sub 1. So you have something here and then something down here. Um, that this one, because it's going downward, uh, you have a decreasing function. Um, so when you're, when you're stating intervals of increasing and decreasing, you always express them as open intervals in terms of the independent variable x. So uh, for example, here I would say this graph is increasing um, on the interval from x sub 1 to x sub 2. And this one would be stated as this is decreasing um, on the interval from x sub 1 to x sub 2. So just remember when you're writing intervals, you always write the interval from smallest to largest. All right. So here's a little bit more vocabulary. Um, we have something called a local maximum, also called a relative maximum. Um, so both terms mean the same thing. Different authors use um, either one or the other. But uh, what it is, it is the highest or greatest point on a graph within a small interval of the independent variable x. Um, a global or absolute maximum, um, which is, again, two different terms, um, and another term uh, could be uni um, universal maximum. That's also another synonym, synonym here. Um, so that, that would be the highest or greatest point on a graph within the entire domain of the function. So um, I'll show you an example in, in a few minutes to, to distinguish the difference between these two. Um, a global or absolute maximum can also be a local maximum. So uh, I'll show you uh, when that happens. Uh, we also have local or relative minimum points. That is the lowest or smallest point on a graph within a small interval of the independent variable x. And then we also have a global absolute minimum, also called universal minimum point. That would be the lowest or smallest point on a graph within the entire domain. So if we wanted to talk about all of these uh, in a, in a um, general way, you would say um, uh, maxima, maxima uh, for, that's the plural um, of a single maximum value because you can have multiple maximums and minimums. Um, and then the plural for a single, um, for multiple minimums would be a uh, minima. Um, and in general, you would call these both uh, extrema, which is what I explain in this next statement. The term extrema or extreme values represents maximum and minimum points. Um, so, and again, extrema would be a, 
uh, the plural uh, form. So, uh, so here's uh, something to keep in mind. An absolute extrema, meaning an absolute maximum or minimum point, um, is also a local extrema as long as the values of x where the extreme values exist are inside of the domain, not at an endpoint of a domain. So uh, we won't have a local or relative uh, extreme values at the beginning or at the end of an interval. All right, so let's look at some examples here. We want to identify the global and the local extrema on the following graph and their intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. All right, so I have extreme values here at these pink points that are, are plotted. Um, so the first one, um, which is at one negative one, that's considered to be both a local and a global minimum point. Um, so the reason why it's a global minimum is because there is no point on this graph um, that is smaller or has a smaller y value than negative one. So in other words, there's nothing below this point anywhere on this graph. So that means it is the smallest value overall on the entire domain. And here it appears that the domain is uh, all real numbers because there are no gaps or breaks and I have arrows at the beginning at the end, which implies that all um, values of X are represented here. Um, so let's go on to why is it a local extrema? It's a local minimum. This is a local minimum because if I look at a small interval around one and I look at values close to one, um, anything close to one would have a Y value that is greater than one negative one. So on a small scale, uh, one negative one is also a local minimum and one negative one is not an endpoint on the domain, again, because this is defined over all real numbers, so there is no endpoint. All right, so let's go on to local maximum. Three one, which is this one, is considered to be a local maximum, but it is not a global maximum. Um, so it's local maximum because it is the greatest value of y um, on a small interval around three. So if I look at numbers close to three and I look at what its Y value is, um, they're all smaller than the pink point at three. Um, but it is not the global maximum because there are infinitely many points that are greater than three, one. Like here, I have five, two. Um, I have another one here at zero, three. So there are many, many, many points um, greater than this one. So there is no global maximum anywhere on this graph. And then finally, four, um, looks like maybe four and three quarters, which is this one. Uh, that's only a local minimum um, because again, it's the smallest point uh, on a, it's the, it's the smallest Y value on a small interval around four. So if I look a little bit to the left of four, there's something greater a little bit to the right of four, there's something greater. Um, but the smallest one in that small interval is at four and uh, three quarters, uh, but it is not the smallest one overall, so it's not a global minimum. All right, so that's it for extreme values. Let's talk about increasing and decreasing. So remember, even though there's arrows here, um, which means the graph keeps going up from left to right, um, uh, keeps going up to the left and keeps going up on the right. When I read it from left to right, the graph is going downward until I get to that absolute minimum. Then it's going upward till I get to the local max. Then it goes down again, again, reaching another uh, local minimum, and then I go up again. So we have to be able to express this in terms of intervals and intervals of X. So it is increasing here. Um, so this part here uh, is from one to three. So again, the one and the three, those are values of X. So from one to three, it is um, increasing. And then it's increasing again from four. Uh, so that's this part from four all the way to infinity. 
Um, remember, always express these as open intervals, not closed, um, because at four, it is neither increasing nor decreasing. Um, so, so you don't want to put a closed interval there. All right, now let's talk about decreasing. It's decreasing first here. Um, so from negative infinity all the way till I get to this point, and this corresponds with the number one. Um, and then it's decreasing again between three and four. So that's your answer here. Okay, so let's move on. Um, when you want to determine where two graphs intersect, uh, we set them equal to each other and then we solve for x. So finding points of, of intersection is actually really important um, in this class and in future math classes, um, especially uh, useful when you take calculus to figure out um, boundaries for areas be, uh, between curves. So this is like a little introduction of, of how you would do that. So suppose I want to determine where f of x equal to x squared and g of x equal to 2x plus 3, uh, where they intersect. So we set them equal to each other because where they're, when they are equal to each other, those would be values of x that they have in common. Um, so this is a quadratic equation, so I put it in standard form, meaning subtract 2x and subtract 3. Uh, this is factorable. So I get x minus 3 and uh, x plus 1, which gives me two solutions, but they're actually not really solutions. They are the x values of the points of intersection. Um, so we have to figure out the y values. Um, so you're going to take the 3 and the negative 1 and plug it into either 1. You should get the same answer um, no matter which one you pick. So when you plug in 3, you get 9. And when you plug in negative 1, uh, you get 1. So 3, 9, and um, negative 1, 1 are points of intersection. All right. So let's, let's interpret this in terms of a graph. So we have another graph here. Um, we have F in blue and G in green, and we want to answer um, these three questions below. So the first question is, which is larger, F of 3 or G of 3? So F of 3 um, is this point here, which looks like it has a value of 6. And g of 3 is this point here, which has a value of 3. So you can safely say that f of 3 is greater than g of 3, because it has a greater y value. All right, now let's look at part b. For what values of x is f of x equal to g of x? So again, where two functions are equal to each other is where they have the same points, where they intersect. Um, so I have um, three points of intersection. I have a point here, I have a point here, and I have a point here. So the first one um, corresponds with the value of x equal to 2. The second point of intersection is at x equal to 5. And the last one is at x equal to 7. Okay, um, third question here is for what values of x is f of x greater than g of x? All right, so f of x is greater than g of x um, where you see this blue curve is above the red curve. So that's here and that is here, okay? So it is greater than um, g of x from 2 to 5. So, and again, this is in um, an open interval because at 2 and at 5, they're actually equal to each other. Um, but then again, it's greater than, um, than the red curve. The blue curve is greater than the red curve uh, from 7, but not at 7, so it's open, um, all the way up to 8. And the reason why 8 is, is, uh, has a bracket and not a parentheses is because this is the end point of the domain of f of x, um, and it is not the same point shared by g of x. So f of x is definitely greater than g of x um, 
all along this interval. And then it doesn't exist after eight. Okay, so uh, that's it for this lesson. Uh, try the homework. Good luck.